Welcome back. Now, Kenya embarks on a defining week as President Uhuru Kenyatta is sworn in, effectively beginning his second term in office, but a rival event by NASA, ostensibly to honor those it claims are its supporters killed by the police, threatens to reign on the inauguration party, while laying bare the political and ethnic divisions ravaging the country. The tough talk by police outlawing uh, the NASA event and an adamant opposition insistence that the event will go on, heightening fears of yet another showdown. Now, in studio, I'm joined by Majority Leader in the National Assembly, Adam Duale, and Minority Leader in the National Assembly, uh, John Buddy. Thank you both for making time for us tonight. What should be the way forward for Kenya? Join the conversation on Twitter using the hashtag Sunday Live or text using the numbers 22422. I'll sample a few on 22422 right now. David Ngure uh, in Langata says, NASA coalition must act and function as opposition, but not as a violence group. Gather peacefully and lawfully. Uh, Martin Dea says, Hi Hussein, political tolerance and sobriety is the best way to go. Proper dialogue with utmost sincerity must be given a chance. Both political divide uh, must exercise goodwill to unite the divided country to ensure peace. Right, keep, keep talking to us. Text us, double two, four, double two, uh, on Twitter using the hashtag uh, Sunday Live. Mbugwa in Kiambu, would this resistance be in place if NASA had won the election? We already have people chosen uh, representatives in all levels of government. Do we suck them now and take up their positions as the people? Keep talking to us, as I said. Text us, double two, four, double two, and on Twitter using the hashtag uh, Sunday Live. Thank you again for making time for us tonight. So, big day on Tuesday, definitely, but NASA is also having a meeting that you're actually calling Honorable Buddy as a morning day, a day for morning, uh, which you have been asked to postpone or otherwise, but you insist it has to happen. First, how does this augur with you, Honorable Duali and Jubilee generally? I think on Tuesday, uh, it's a date that is in the Constitution. Seven days from the day when the Supreme Court gave their ruling this, the, the seven days, the Tuesday that follows. So it's a constitutional function in which the president will be sworn in for a fresh term, him and his deputy. It is a public holiday. It is a historic day for the people of Kenya. There is nothing wrong with mourning uh, uh, fellow Kenyans who died in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And in this case, who died during the riots. But I will really ask uh, our colleagues, the NASA Brigade, and we are giving them an, an, a hand of uh, reconciliation, that Kenya must move forward, that in the August election, Kenyans in their millions elected various leaders in different uh, cadres, from MCA to governor to president. I think the time has come that the leadership in, in the executive, as the president and the deputy, those of us who are in the legislature, the county government, the county assemblies, the judiciary, all of us will leave the cycle of electioneering and we go back to the people and deliver service to the people. So I really ask uh, our colleagues that uh, you chose a day uh, that is in the constitution, that Kenyans uh, have a public holiday, and the only function on that day is the swearing in of the president in accordance with Article 141 of the Constitution. Okay. They insist they still within their rights. I'll read this text. Why can't they do the rally another day than during the swearing-in of Uhuru Kenyatta? This is provoking. Provoking. That is on number two, four, number two. Honorable Buddy, why Tuesday? Why does this have to be Tuesday? First of all, I don't know what is so uh, important about Tuesday, uh, that people don't want us to hold an event that is uh, remembering the, those Kenyans uh, who were shot dead by the government. Uh, by the police, people who uh, really uh, did not commit any offense apart from uh, receiving their leader uh, who was arriving back in the country and uh, was celebrating the return of their leader. Uh, so Tuesday is any other day. It is like Monday, it is like Sunday, it is like Wednesday, it is like Thursday. We have not been ambiguous. We have been very categorical and clear that we don't recognize the election of Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto as president and deputy president uh, respectively and that uh, the swearing in that is taking place on Tuesday we are not part of it and therefore you see what I don't understand with them um, especially the Jubilee uh, team is that we allowed them 
we really wanted dialogue initially. Remember, we said we spoke about dialogue immediately after the Supreme Court made their ruling on first. And uh, our uh, reasoning or our quest for dialogue was informed by the realization that this country is so divided and that things are not working as we expected them to. Remember, this journey has been long, Hussein. Uh, from uh, it took 25 years to realize uh, this or more to realize the 2010 constitution and we thought we were just about to get the kind of governance that we wanted but we have been taken back now kenyans are debating uh, whether we need to have things reformed and changed but we called for the dialogue our colleagues uh, really didn't see the need uh, for dialogue actually instead of uh, uh, extending the, uh, the, the olive branch that I see them now extending, we received insults. Rael Odinga has been insulted many times and Rael Odinga really does not suffer from this insult because he has seen it all. The people who believe in him, people like us, really get hurt. But now where we are, we are saying the pre whatever you call election, we allowed you, Jubilee, to do your mock election you are still not satisfied. They are still not happy. We allowed them to enjoy themselves at the Supreme Court. They are still not happy. Now, when will they be happy? What we are saying, if you feel President Kenyatta was elected, Uhuru Kenyatta was elected president properly, legitimately, and legally, go to Kasarani yeah. and swear him in. As we will have our function at Jakaranda, several, so many uh, kilometers away, why should it bother Jubilee? And now, to make it worse, the police has expressed themselves, itself, the police force, uh, or the police service, by saying that the, 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 the meeting is illegal. If we do not hold that rally on Tuesday, we are allowing the police again to get away with illegality. Okay. Because they are not supposed to declare any assembly illegal. They are supposed to be informed and provide security. If they can't provide security, we will try to provide it. Now, uh, Osen, uh, two things. One, President Uhuru Kenyatta was declared the president through an election process of 26 August, uh, 26 October 2017. His legitimacy again was tested in the Supreme Court. And once the Supreme Court said that the election was fair, free, transparent, and conducted within the constitutional framework mm -hmm. and the electoral laws. So we are not asking uh, 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 Honorable Bandy and team uh, to, to give us anything. President Huru Kenyatta is going to be sworn in on Tuesday, and next Tuesday is not an ordinary Tuesday within the reading of even the constitution. So Honorable Bandy, you know, a good friend of mine, a good lawmaker, is a day provided for in the constitution for the swearing in of the president of the Republic of Kenya. Secondly, Honorable Bandi, even in his backyard, in his constituency, there are people who are saying because uh, he, he won the election, they don't want to recognize him as a member of parliament. So in every constituency, every uh, level of an election, MCA governor, there are many Kenyans who lost. But today, they will subscribe to the leadership of those who have been elected. If they have a problem, they will challenge it in the, in the judicial system. So all that we are saying is, Tuesday, which is set up in the Constitution as a public holiday for the swearing of the president, our colleagues are not up to anything good. You can mourn those people on a Wednesday. From reliable sources, those uh, 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 Kenyans, uh, who lost their lives will be buried over the weekend. So the memorial can take place on Wednesday, can take place on Thursday. So all we are telling them is that the die is cast. There is a government that will be in place from Tuesday. Okay. So if they have insisted on, on, on doing this on Tuesday, police uh, is outlawing it, they're not going to re listen to the police. You can hear from what somebody is uh, talking. Why can't the police, because you're in government, why can't the police uh, let the NASA event to continue? We saw last no, time, we saw last time when reloading was coming back into the country, when they stopped them and NASA went on, it was chaotic and actually people lost their lives. Why should they stop them? No, I, I think when I, when I had the, 
or watch the press conference of uh, Jafet Kome. Jafet Kome cited the law, the Public Order Act, which in ev it, 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 where every citizen, and every, whether you're a political party, must notify the police of any of their gathering. By, by the time he was, he was talking yesterday, NASA has not, not notified him. So in that sense, then, they're violating the law. So if they have notified, I am sure the police will not go and break uh, their, 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 their prayer session or memorial service. Instead, maybe they'll give them security. What Jafat Kome said is that they must follow the provisions of the Public Order Act. As yeah. you respond, Honorable Badi, you said uh, this from a statement yesterday that you do not uh, recognize the October 26 election. You've said that again. Uh, you've actually also said that uh, you recognize Raila and Kalonzo as the legitimate president and deputy president. And as a sovereign people, commit yourselves to see to it that they assume office. What do you mean by that? First of all, let me address this issue of Jafet Komi and the police. Uh, although I don't really like responding to Jafet Komi, I think it should be answered by people like Felipe Tali, who are our communications director uh, in ODM. Uh, but let me just talk about it because fundamentally it appears it's uh, bringing some confusion. The notification to the police is just a requirement so that the police provide yeah. security, not uh, a, a, requ a request for licensing. And so what, we, and, and Jafet Kome was actually preempting because uh, no one had uh, indicated where we were going to hold our rally. Our rally is going to be at Jakaranda and already the police, the OCS, uh, in that area has been notified as we speak. And so I would only uh, advise uh, my colleague and friend here, uh, Honorable Duale, to advise Kome to keep off our rally no, no, and only security. provide security, you'll provide security. Uh, but not to, to, to disrupt it. Mm -hmm. We don't expect any disruption. Now, regarding the outcome of presidential election in this country, I think we have been very clear as NASA on this matter. Uh, we have said that uh, we have credible statistics and information. The server that uh, IBC refused to open. Uh, and we know very well that we won the August 8th, uh, 8th election. And that is why IBC could not uh, open the servers was required on, uh, after the August 8th election, but they were very quick at asking Kenyans to uh, see the server immediately after the 26th uh, October sham election. I want to make it very categorical that we don't recognize the any purported election of Uhuru Kenyatta as president of this country, and we still stand by our position so that great. Raila Odinga is, was elected the president, no matter how what? long it takes. Based on what? I have just mentioned that based on the results <laughs> that IBC refused to make public. Okay, uh, fair enough, fair government. enough. I mean, you're within your rights to say that, but you went to the Supreme Court after the August election. It was nullified, meaning there was no winner declared after that. It was nullified by the Supreme Court, that election. So right. where do you confer legitimacy of Raila Odinga and, and Kalon Musioka as the president and deputy we president? Because you're, saying, you're saying they're the legitimate president and deputy president. U Hussein, the, we expected immediately after the results of the August the election was nullified. We expected a, a credible election to be conducted. And we gave out very clearly, uh, without any ambiguity, uh, the reducible minimums that we expected to be met before another repeat election was conducted. We have called for a repeat election uh, which would follow the provisions of the Constitution and the law. Uh, and uh, that, then, just let me, Bandi, let me just, just answer your question. Let me just finish. I will answer yeah. it. Uh, on a Yesterday you said the know, president... Uh, I know, the president, uh, I know you yes. want me to, yeah, yeah. to be... Uh, answer the but, question. But I will answer it. Uh, yeah, why where you get the... I, I am very good in remembering. My yes. thought is well <laughs> planned. Okay. Okay. I, I was saying that uh, we expected a repeat election, and we have called for 90 days <coughs> election to be conducted within 90 days. In the absence of that, and seeing things as they are moving, it is clear and evident that our colleagues want to continue with an illegitimate outcome of a process, uh, an outcome of an illegitimate process. Therefore, we are telling them we are also going back to August 8th election outcome where we know who won the presidency. After the August 8th, I'll, I'll just repeat this as you answer my question. Supreme Court nullified the results of the August 8th election. That you agree? That you agree with, isn't it? 
I do agree with that. So where do you confer this legitimacy from? Where do you get the legitimacy Uzzeda, from? I don't know why it is uh, you are get, finding it difficult to understand me. I am saying that immediately that election was nullified. We expected a credible election to be conducted. Okay. Which so election has not been which conducted? Has not, according to you, therefore, yeah. where we are, mm -hmm. we gave two conditions. Number one was to have a repeat election within 90 days or agreeable time based on dialogue. Remember, we have called for dialogue. We even said it doesn't have to be 90 days. It can even go to six months. But so long as we have a credible election. In the absence of that, and where we now see our colleagues trying to use outcome of an illegitimate process, we are telling them, then we go back to the outcome of Agassi. Okay, which, finally, before Dwale, before Where before Raheel Odinga was the, was the president. <laughs> okay, that's elected. Really that is what you believe as NASA? It's not what we believe. That is what we have. Okay. That is from what the, we know. Okay. Yes. Officially, from the records of IEBC, they declared President Kenyatta. You went to the Supreme Which Court. Which election was nullified. Was nullified. Yes. So we don't know, there was no winner uh, announced then after August 8th. That's what I'm saying. And later on, you do not recognize the repeated election of, of October 26th. You say that very Correct. clearly. Yes. Uh, it is that repeated election and a subsequent petition at the Supreme Court that was that upheld the election that has now given Uhuru Kenyatta, uh, has, has now confirmed Uhuru Kenyatta as the president. It's still a Supreme Court decision, just like there was a Supreme Court decision that nullified the August election that you agreed with. First of all, you need to appreciate that the, the circumstances under which the Supreme Court was acting. I do know that uh, they have not given the full judgment, so we may get mm. uh, the reasoning why they had to arrive at that decision. But if you ask me, the circumstances under which this Supreme Court was acting is one of the reasons why we are saying we need dialogue in this country. We're saying this country is calling for discussion on the governance. If Supreme Court, after <coughs> making a judgment, can be threatened, can be scared, <laughs> can be intimidated, then as a country we need to talk and talk seriously. You know what I'm saying, I think uh, our colleagues, uh, now the official opposition, must have lost the bearing along the political uh, route. And from where I sit, I think they must have lost serious political ground. Let me tell you, Kenyans went to the election on the 8th of August. Whoever was declared the winner, Huru Kenyatta was declared the winner with 1.5 million of votes ahead of Raila Odinga. That was nullified. Yes. NASA went to court. It was nullified. The court said elections must be done within six days. There's no way fact, uh, first that uh, we want to do things outside the Constitution, outside the law. The 60 days election took place on the 26th of October. And the process of the Which they boycotted. Yes. Yeah? The, yeah, of course. Yeah. The process of declaring a president is well documented in the Constitution. An election must be conducted by the, by the electoral body. That's IBC. A candidate is declared in 26. Uhuru Kenyatta was declared. 14 days was the time left for any citizen to go to court. A number of civil society and individual citizens went to court. The court on uh, uh, Monday last week gave a verdict. That verdict of the court was the last legitimate test for any presidential elections. Okay. That, that, you, now, that led to Tuesday 26, I mean the Tuesday uh, 29, uh, the swearing of the president. That is a process. Okay. You know, you cannot just say that uh, the Supreme Court was under uh, duress when you have not even taken part in the election of 26. So but did you care? On the 25th of October, uh, did you care just before the repeat election when Supreme Court judges were there was a petition filed by um, think um, Harun Dubi. Harun Dubi. Yes. Uh, did you care because you are party as a respondent there? Yes. Why didn't you even talk about because NASA raised an issue as a respondent as a party to that case? Why didn't you even raise an issue as Jubilee that there were some judges that were absent and they did not even care to say where they were? You know, Hussein. We are not like NASA. We don't speak from both sides of our mouth. We can't say there must be an independence of the judiciary as provided for in law, and at the same time, ask why judges did not come. But in that the judges, you? the judges, on the first of September, the judges nullified our elections of a presidential candidate. Two hours later, our candidate came on live television and said, "I respect the independence of the judiciary." and the ruling of the Supreme Court. 
I will go back to the people of Kenya as provided for in the Constitution within the next 60 days. On the 25th of, of, of October, one day to the election, mm -hmm. ask yourself, if you wanted really to stop the election of that day, how come you didn't even uh, 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 take your, your, your court case 10 days to the election date? Okay. The whole thing was mischievous. Your candidate said they'll, re they'll respect the... But I think the question that you asked me, the question that you asked me is good if you put it to the president, the Supreme Court, and the Chief Justice. Okay. How come that day your bench uh, uh, was not available? But the question you're talking about uh, your candidate uh, having... Uh, agreed to the decision by the Supreme Court and respected it. In between, there was a lot of talk about we shall revisit and Wakora and all that. That happened, but let's not go back there. No, no. My, my question to you, Honorable Still, Dan, still my, as, a, as a party, still as a party, we respected the judgment of 1st of September. Okay. As a judgment. But we are not happy with that judgment. That's okay. the position as a coalition we are taking. Well, this is what critics have been saying now that you're talking about legitimacy, that... Uh, I mean, first, what we saw from the October 26 election, it was notably, uh, I mean, visible that uh, there was a lot of turnout in, in the areas of Jubilee. Oh, first, turnout was not good, generally. But of course, there was a high turnout in Jubilee strongholds, especially Rift Valley and Central uh, regions. Critics say the legal issues have been sorted as regards that election, but political solution has not been found. Absolutely. Does this mean, and, and do you think Absolutely. this actually dim diminishes the legitimacy Absolutely of uh, Uru Kenyatta and William Ruto. Legitimacy is not a pedestrian statement, Hussein. Legitimacy of any election, of a presidential election, is anchored in the Constitution. For a president to be legally elected, he must win 50 plus one. Uru Kenyatta, in both elections, won about 50 percent. In fact, in the 26th general election, he won with 98 percent. Legitimacy is about he must win in 24 of the 47 counties. Legitimacy, the last there one. There was a withdrawal of a worthwhile competitor. No, no, in many elections. No, 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 in many elections. In many elections. Legitimacy comes again when you petition the Supreme Court. All the questions that the Supreme Court was dealing with were based on legitimacy. And all the questions were addressed by the Supreme Court. That having looked at all those questions, mm. they have found out that this election is illegitimate. Let me come back to the issue of, uh, of, uh, of uh, turnout. Turnout in repeat elections worldwide. President Trump today is in office with 27% in Burkina Faso, in Ghana. You look at any part in the world. My point on double is even, that it's very, even, it's very clear. France, my point, my even, point is that it's very France. clear. There's but let me come to the last bit of your my point. My point is it's very clear. No, no, let me, there are divisions in this country no, right absolutely. now. I'm coming to the last question. That you said the legal issue, the legitimacy have been set. There is a political issue. Some are arguing. The political, it diminishes the political saying, issue yeah. is the one that the president is going to address from Tuesday. From Tuesday, mm -hmm. Uhuru Kenyatta will not be the president of Jubilee. He will be the, he will be the president of the 45 so million Kenyans. Whether those who voted for him, those who didn't vote for him. And based on that, he must reconcile the nation. He must bring equity. He must bring inclusivity. And he must reach out to all the players of the so political he's talking, divide. He's talking to and the that is what the president, even today, mm -hmm. in your news, even today in church, last week in Kirinyaga, the president is saying now he has an obligation to reach out. And that is what he did in five years ago right. when he took over in 2013. And that's what all we're telling our, 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 our colleagues, that come back to parliament. Mm -hmm. the, our government, the Jubilee government, needs a very progressive an effective opposition. Okay. To so many people have been, told, have been talking about talks. I want to know from both of you, and you can respond obviously for, to all those things Duale has said as you answer this. Uh, but first, I'll start with you, Duale. Is there a need to talk with the opposition directly on what kind of talks? So? There's need to talk to everybody, and there's need to talk to the political class. There's need to talk to um, all those who have been wounded in the political competition, and more so to the opposition. What will be the talk? The talk will be how to move Kenya, how to have a government that is all inclusive, a government that will take care of all the communities, all the ethnic diversity of our, of our country, a government that will revive the economy, a government that will make sure its transformation agenda is felt in each and every village in our country. Honorable we seriously need to talk, Hussein, and I want to say this very categorically, that NASA 
is very open to talks. We have talked about it and we continue to talk about it. Where we are as a country, we are so divided, we said. And that is something that no one should, uh, can run away from. We are divided as a nation, but beyond that, there are a lot of things that are not going right. Apart from what we see as rolling back on the gains of democracy, what we see as uh, the compromise electoral process, we see a lot of things going wrong. The civil society is now being intimidated. Uh, we have uh, also seen even the president going to the extent of intimidating political commentators, people who appear in uh, talk shows to address dif uh, different issues. How low can we get? We want to just... Um, uh, be very clear that the discussion is important and we need to be very progressive and pragmatic in this discussion. It should not be limited to issues about uh, leadership. It should not be uh, confined to issues about immediate issues on governance. We need to talk about even our economy. I know many people are talking about uh, our economy getting a beating because of the long political mm. uh, uh, period. But far from it, the level of borrowing in this country, if we had uh, time to discuss that, we would, but we don't have. Uh, we are now even borrowing money uh, at uh, the rate of 12% uh, infrastructure development bonds. When individual Kenyans are borrowing at 14%, we are also borrowing at 12.5%. It is a shame. It is something that we need to discuss. But let me, uh, Hussein, if you allow me, mm. just go back to what uh, Duale was addressing regarding the legitimacy of, uh, uh, of the uh, Uhuru Kenyatta's election on 26th. I want to put it very clear that if it was that easy, if it, was, uh, if it is that easy that uh, the election of 26th met the credibility, the legitimacy that is required, the threshold in an, a functioning democracy, and if it is that easy that uh, the pronouncement of the Supreme Court has validated President Uhuru's, I mean Uhuru Kenyatta's win as a president, then I don't see why they should bother with us. Why don't they just allow us? Well, well, no, let me, let me just, uh, well, 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 I, allow, I allowed you yes, to, to speak. Just allow me my space okay. yeah. uh, to talk. Why do they bother with our rallies at Jakaranda and any other? Please allow us to do. In fact, I am yet to see anywhere written in the Constitution that a day when uh, someone is supposed to be sworn in as president or for any position that that day is so sacred that no any other activity even mourning the dead or burying someone or even praying in my house uh, everything has to come to a standstill but Hussein what I want Duale to go back and think about is he's talking about repeat elections registering low voter turnout everywhere in the world please honorable Duale ask yourself this fundamental question why people were not fatigued in Kiambu, Muranga, Nyeri, Meru, Embu, Tarakani. Never had it. Eighty-six percent the candidate was turned Kambu. out. Turned out to vote, and that is the answer. Turned out to vote. People in Nandi turned out to vote at seventy or so percent. It's common. Yet the rest of the country did not see the need to turn out even at twenty percent, including where the leader no, no, no. majority comes from. Including the no 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 I think you're so not you, getting, so you know you're, my constituents. <laughs> you see you okay. can't speak of my say, you, can you allow can yeah, you yeah, allow to allow me but you know you have to be the problem with the dual is not listening to what I'm saying. He's listening to himself. What I'm saying is ask yourself across the country, go to Lower Eastern, go to Coast Province, the entire coast province and tell me any place which produced even 20% voter turnout. Even his area where he comes from, the leader of majority, did not see the need to turn out in large numbers to vote. Go to Western, no county, including even Bungoma, where they literally lived there uh, during campaigns, anyway, would not even turn out at 20%. The, those are, those are the question the that you need to ask yourself is why is it that these people whom you call have produced a presidential candidate feel that this candidate is theirs, that this president is theirs, and others see that president as not theirs. That is why we are saying something has gone wrong. And in fact, if Uhuru Kenyatta was uh, honest with himself, he would ask himself fundamental questions. These things he's talking about today, he should have done them from 2013. Okay. He should have, in, so, he should have co consolidated this country. But you all agree there's need to talk, isn't it? There is need to talk, okay. and I've said that. Okay. And uh, anyone who thinks there is no need to talk in this country is the enemy of Finally, this Finally, You know what I was saying? Number one, even in the 8th of August elections, the turnout was very high in, in Siaya, in Kisumu, and, uh, and Migori, and, and, Kisu, and, 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 
and uh, all the all, it, yeah. all the Nyanza counties for Raila Odinga and not maybe for other counties. So where there is a candidate, there will be high voter turnout in this region. That's another breach. You know, an election has happened. A president is going to be sworn in for his second term on Tuesday, inshallah. Do we need to talk? We need to talk. We need to reconcile the nation. How do you do that? What plans do you have? Or what kind of talks? That is what a, structure? That is, that is a function from the speech of the president. Mm -hmm. you, will, you will hear. You will hear, on you will hear the framework we are going to do. But you know, we need to tell our colleagues here that Kenya does not need violence. Kenya does not need that we talk to each other. You know, with all the insults. You know, I heard Honorable Mbandi saying that uh, uh, Honorable Raila Odinga uh, has, been has been insulted. Imagine, and I don't know whether he's, he's, he's aware, the kind of insults Honorable Mudama, Honorable Halwale, Honorable Mili, or Mili, I mean Mili Odiambo, Gladys Wanga, uh, you know, say in their rallies. If, okay. there, if there are people who insult people, it's more on their side. Okay. But I think, uh, having said all that, I think now, uh, from Tuesday, uh, we need to talk to each other. We need to reconcile our country. We need uh, to build uh, unity across our country. We need to have a very strong opposition. We need to have a very strong government that delivers on its transformation agenda. And we need to move forward. Okay. Finally, buddy. For me, it is simple. Uh, well, on the issue of insults, I don't believe in people insulting each other. I, I and we've believe, seen it in, across the board. I so believe we that don't even we, need to, we need to stop insulting mm -hmm. uh, leaders. I think we can criticize the performance of leaders without going personal absolutely, on them. Absolutely. So that is my stand, regardless of where, mm. from where the, the insult mm. is coming from. But I want to uh, put it very, very clear, Hussein, and uh, for our listeners and viewers uh, to hear that. NASA is not violent as the Jubilee is trying to portray us. Check any rally that NASA has organized where police have not interfered. There is no violence. We have even held so many rallies. In fact, there was a rally we held in Jakaranda without police presence, not even a single police presence, and no one claimed that there was any violence. The violence comes about like when we were coming to meet our leader from JKIA. Receive. To receive yeah. our leader from to JKIA. To, to, uh, our leader was just returning home from uh, 10 days uh, visit abroad. Then along the way, and we were carrying twigs. Everybody was no, celebrating. No. We were carrying twigs. Even if you were carrying stones, stones. and you have not thrown that stone. <laughs> Why do you have police you officers guys, blocking guys. our way? Yeah throwing tear gas at us, shooting us. Right now we have over Do you regret what happened that day, six people. in terms of the police and what the police did? We have I, think, I think we all of us regret because there was destruction of property, there was destruction of, uh, I mean, uh, of, there was loss of life. We regret, but uh, greatly they are to blame. The confrontation, how many times has Raila Odinga came, out, uh, came from a foreign trip? I mean, what was the big deal uh, in, 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 in bringing uh, all that kind of shenanigan? I mean, Raila Odinga goes out and come back. But the, what was the big deal? Yes, what was the big deal? He came back, he came back from Zanzibar. What Zanzibar, was the big deal? you were leaving it off that you all need to talk. I'd rather no, no, leave it, I'd rather I, I, leave it there. But kindly, but, kindly. Oh, yeah, no, I, no. I want to ask him that question. Yes. Duale. So what was the big deal in... Uh, not police not allowing him to do what he wanted to do or, or his supporters receiving him? No, 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 no. I mean, Hussein, I've asked you a question. We regret the, the destruction of property. We regret, in fact, the loss of life. No Kenyan should lose life in any circumstance. But I want to ask Honorable Bandi and even you, what was the big deal that forces NASA to welcome Honorable Raila Odinga from a mere 10 days trip? In the U.S., okay. which, in my opinion, he regrets what was happened. very, was, what, what, in my opinion, was again a very unsuccessful uh, trip. He regrets what happened. No, but, but do you also regret because no, we didn't no, hear? We didn't hear. No, you I, respond. Do you only, regret the destruction the of thing, property? The only thing I regret is that the police action so she doesn't regret led, the loss of property. led. Let me just finish. But there was looting. There was the the, of the police action led to loss of life, loss of property. And Who was such looting? criminal. Who was looting? I don't know. If so I know the people are now, uh, okay. please allow me to say this. Yeah. The big deal was the, just as there was no big deal when Uhuru and Ruto were coming from the head, so there was a big and deal. they were received but there was by a their big supporters. There was a big deal. These you people, cannot choose for us. Let before. us speak. Just a little bit. Jubilee cannot be defining what is a big deal for NASA. 
if it was a big deal to receive Uhuru and Ruth on that day, it was equally a big deal for us to receive Raina. And I want to add by saying, the big deal was that Raina was coming back home. And we wanted to have a rally at Uhuru. How come you didn't have one for one? I think everyone. We wanted to have a rally at Uhuru. How come you didn't receive in that way? I think everyone. Everyone is within their rights to decide what is big or not big for them. But at least both of you agree that there's need to talk. So we'll just leave it at that, Honorable Dwale. Thank you so much. We will talk. Okay, thank you so much. Majority Leader of the National Assembly, Adam Dwale, and Minority Leader, John Badi. Also, Garissa Township MP and Suba MP, respectively. Thank you so much for making time for us tonight. Keep talking to us. We are asking you what should be the way forward uh, for Kenya. Text us double two four double two, and uh, on Twitter is the hashtag Sunday Live. We'll have a look at the final uh, look at your feedback after this break.